What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Going to be playing a game on PTCGO today. And today we are rocking Grand Bowl, or as I enjoy calling it, Clifford the Big Pink Dog. Very fun deck here. And apparently did really well in Japan. So a, you know, kind of deck that is getting some hype here. It looks like we were playing against Zorark Decidueye, so it should be an interesting deck to play against as well. So that's awesome. I love it when my opponent is playing a cool deck, because then you kind of get to see two new decks in action here. Saw that my opponent is playing Professor Elm's Lecture, which should be very good for Zorark and Decidueye decks. Now, Decidueye seems like a kind of good partner for Zorark to have at this point in time. We saw in my last video that Zorark can be weak to Lost March when Lost March gets set up correctly, right? We also saw that my opponent is playing Judge and things like that. Judge can be a little bit tough for my Grand Bull deck to deal with. This deck also gets Ditto Prism Star, which is fantastic, super cool. A lot of these decks are going to be playing like Alolan Ninetales as well, and apparently Alolan Ninetales is a, you know, Alolan Ninetales Decidueye is a deck that did well in the, what is it, the, was it the French or Paris special event? France. There's a France special event. Natalie is always the one with all the facts. So uh, apparently that was a deck that, that got some hype there. See, my opponent decided to retreat the Ditto Prism Star and is going to be using Beacon. Definitely saw that coming. We are going to want to kind of get in here with our Macargo, uh, but really, I guess we Great Ball and kind of hope that we find an Orangaroo. That is really, oh, we actually, duh, just like, no. Nah. <laughs> I don't know what in the world I'm thinking about. All right, we're going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, great ball, and hope we get into a Macargo is probably going to be the best thing for me. I'm also going to Guzma up one of these Pokemon, probably the Ditto Prism Star again. Just bring that thing active. Uh, it can be anything. It's got the least amount of hit points. And, you know, if my opponent uses Rainbow Energy on it again, I guess... You know, it'd be only 20 hit points away from getting knocked out. That's kind of cool. I guess maybe the Rowlets could be the best, though, considering they can't do any damage to me. So we'll just Guzma up. Sure, we're going to Guzma up a Rowlet here. And then, what, I could make a mess for 20 damage, but we're just going to Great Ball, see what we end up getting. Nothing, just nothing off that Great Ball. That's fine. We got Instruct for three. I'll attach that there, Instruct for three, and see what we get. This is a pretty strong start for the Gramble deck, not going to lie. We got Gramble in hand. That's good. Got Rescue Stretcher, but no Pokemon in the discard pile right now, so I'm going to have to find a way to get that done. Cool. We've got another Snubble here. So so next turn, we're more or less just going to have to, you know, kind of use Oranguru and hope, oh, I actually can make a mess and discard that Rescue Stretcher. So that's like pretty sweet, actually. And I think I just do that. Yeah, we're just going to discard the Rescue Stretcher. So that's an awesome way to kind of thin the hand down. Next turn, uh, you know, whatever I top deck, we just got to hope that it's a burnable card. And we're going to be using all out for 160 damage, which is just a lot of pressure. My opponent's probably going in with Beacon, and they've had to burn two energy so far to get that Vulpix into the active position, but they end up using Judge. So this is interesting. I actually have not been judged a whole lot playing with this deck, so it should be interesting to see how well it responds to that pressure of being judged and having your hand brought back up to four cards. But there are just like a ton, a ton, a ton of discard cards in this deck, so we should have no problem getting our hand back down to, um, you know, back down regularly. But that top deck was unfortunate. I can't Ultra Ball away Fairy and the Rescue Stretcher. That's actually completely fine. So let's just do that. We're going to bench the Ditto Prism Star like that. Ultra Ball away Rescue Stretcher. Yeah, and we're going to go get ourselves, I think, uh, a Macargo. And then the idea is that we stack our deck. Um, we stack our deck with an Ultra Ball, right? And I think so long as there's an Ultra Ball left in deck. Is there an Ultra Ball left in deck? Yes, there is. Okay, so we're going to stack our deck with an Ultra Ball, and then that way we just have everybody in play, ready to go. And let's see, I think, yeah, I need to attach this Fairy Energy so I don't have to discard it. That's good. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to Macargo stack the deck. Good to go. All right, we'll just 
we'll go there. Very good. Uh, so let's smooth over, put the Ultra Ball on top of the deck. That way we know when we instruct, we instruct for two cards and they can just get discarded. Now, this is a little sketchy because you hope that you don't instruct into anything too terribly valuable here, but uh, that's fine. You know, we'll, we'll take this every time. Ultra Ball away the shrine, get ourselves Gramble, and we're about to all out for 160 damage. Now, this is a little bit sketchy, and I am worried about how Granbull fares against like snipe decks and things like that, because as we can see, Ditto Prism Star only has 40 hit points. Uh, Granbull or Snubble has 70, which is like a little bit more sustainable than like 60. It's better than 60 for sure. But we do have to worry about these guys just getting sniped over and over again. And if my opponent can heal, they can definitely just kind of wear away at me. You know, uh, Gramble doesn't actually do enough damage to one hit KO any of these Pokemon. So we have to hope that we can just whittle them down. We do have a burnable hand here. So that's pretty good. The Lost Blender doing a great job there, giving us that option. But we are a little bit concerned about getting rid of so many rescue stretchers because these Pokemon are going to go down and that will be a little bit sketchy uh, if I have three Lost Marchers in the bin. We also, I guess I can stack with my cargo. That's kind of interesting. So I never really thought about that. You can smooth over and then Lost Blender into whatever you want. So I really like that because I can just make sure that that's going to be a burnable card. Maybe we get ourselves uh, a choice band or something like that, or just more Pokemon so that I don't end up getting, you know, sniped off the field here. So we got ourselves another fairy energy. That's very good. And I'm going to evolve this Ditto Prism Star so that it doesn't get kind of sniped into oblivion here. Then I think I need to, oh, okay, yeah, I can Lost Blunder away the Rescue Stretcher and the Bodybuilding Dumbbells, but I guess that's not really, you know, I could have gotten rid of the Fairy Energy, but I don't like getting rid of too many Fairy Energy either. I actually just cut the Energy Recycle System. Not, I'm not convinced that that card is like completely necessary. So what I can do is I can actually, to save the Bodybuilding Dumbbells, I can attach it and then instruct for one and then I can, you know, uh, stack a burnable card on the top of my deck and make sure that uh, I lost Blender into something, you know, uh, burnable. So we're going to do that probably. Let's see, 120 hit points. If I attach this bodybuilding dumbbells to the active, I actually make it kind of annoying for my opponent to knock it out. They would have to snipe it like two more times instead of just one more time. So that's probably pretty good. Just making them waste uh, an extra snipe there. Yes, then like I said, let's just instruct for one. That's fine. And then we'll Lost Mixer these two cards away. Um, that's fine. And I will stack first. So we're going to stack a Grand Bull onto the active. That's probably okay. And then I will evolve that Snubble on the bench. And there we go, Lost Blender. Let's get rid of these two guys, get myself that Gramble. Busted deck, there we go. I actually, yep, should have evolved this one. That's cool, we were playing a little too fast. All out, so 160 damage there. Um, that's weird, I did 160 damage, but doesn't this, oh no, I always think that, uh, I always get the resistances confused, obviously. I resist dark, uh, they do not resist very, very good. So we did 160 damage plus the Shrine, 180, very good. And I guess, you know, unfortunately we'll take one more attack. They'll be at 190, then 200 by the time they get back into the active position. That's okay though. I am kind of expecting them to heal, not gonna lie. I think that that's probably something they end up getting their hands on, which will be a little bit frustrating. And that's gonna be the kind of major hang up with this matchup is how often can they ace Arola? How often can they max potion? things like that. And we have to see how many of those cards that my opponent's actually playing in their deck as well. Like they might not have too many. Uh, you know, Decidueye lists are notoriously very tight uh, on space. They drop the super boost energy there. They only have one stage two in play though. So they could decide to hollow hunt GX if they end up getting that thing into the active position. We see that they have discarded all their Alola Ninetales. This deck is really gonna love it when they get that fairy type 
uh, Alolan Ninetales there. Let's see. So, did they end up using their attack, or is it still their turn? What do they do? They do? I, I actually was in the other thing. Game log. Let's see. Uh, used Riotous Beating and did 100 damage. Okay, excellent. That's exactly what I wanted. So, they attacked there. Um, we could just go ahead in with our with our Grand Bowl. That's, that's totally fine. And we are going to take our two prizes here. So, we definitely like that. I could, like Guzma, if I end up getting... A Guzma, I guess. I have fairy energy in my hand. I could like stack Guzma and be very greedy. Uh, being greedy does not seem great, but it is an option that I have. Being greedy here, I guess uh, we just would hope that I don't get myself into like a clogged hand. But the idea would be to Guzma up and let this thing, you know, get knocked out by shrine damage. Uh, I guess we would Guzma up the Decidueye would probably be the best bet. That or Guzma up Dartrix, knock it out. Uh, let's let's see what we're going to stack. So this is kind of a sketchy play here. I don't love it. Um, but I don't know. I, I really, I, I kind of want to be, I kind of want to be greedy. I'm just like kind of feeling greedy here. But if we draw into like an energy or another supporter, we just lose. So that's bad. Uh, I think, let's see, we just, we could play Diantha, you know, Diantha would get us, um, you know, rescue stretchers back. That's fine. Let's, let's get ourselves a Diantha. Sure. Yeah. And then we'll do that. So we're just going to knock this thing out and we're going to just die at the time. That's fine. And then I guess I just instruct now because then I will get like Diantha and just one other card. And I kind of like that. And that way it'll be easier for me to pare my hand down, I think. So we've got Diantha and Nest Ball. So it would have worked out. Uh, we got a Nest Ball there. So if I had Guzma, it would have been totally fine. But that's okay. So we actually don't need to have a zero card hand here because I just will knock this thing out anyways. So it's okay for me to, uh, it's okay for me to have, let's see, I think I like the second Oranguru here. I could have gotten another Snubble into play, but honestly, second Oranguru is like kind of just nice. So we'll do that. And then I guess I like to Diantha here and we could get ourselves back in the hand. I kind of like Rescue Stretcher back. And then a Shrine back, just in case, uh, or a Guzma back. And that way, next turn, we can Guzma and like hit into something else. I kind of like that. That's good. The Bodybuilding Dumbbells is good as well, though. But I kind of want that Rescue Stretcher just to like throw more Pokemon back into the deck. So we'll get these guys here. And that way, I just have them as an option. And we'll, you know plan on using the Rescue Stretcher next turn. Then I'll draw a little bit more since we just don't need a zero card hand this turn. We've got a Shrine in hand too. Okay, so that's interesting. I could deal with this hand next turn, but I like having the option to Guzma just to target whatever. You know, my opponent's gonna promote something. We got the Lost Blender here. My opponent's gonna promote something that they want to be in the active position. I will probably, you know, I would love to take out a Zorark or something like that, or the Decidueye. If the Decidueye doesn't come active, it is though. And I imagine that they're either going to, you know, use that Razor Leaf attack uh, if they get two more stage twos in play. But if they can't, then they'll just be happy to hollow hunt. They do have 60 damage. It's going to be 70 by the time that shrine is done doing its magic there. So 70, that's like 180 more. And they do have life forest here. Once during each player's turn, that player might heal 60 damage and remove all special. Ah, oh, no, bad. Oh, that's bad. It's actually super good for a Decidueye deck. Uh, but also really good that I happen to have my shrine in play. So this thing is going to be clean. Uh, very, very clean. Very good that I have my shrine in hand, though, so I could go just throw that right back down. They're only going to have that for one turn, but that is just so good with Decidueye. Decidueye loves this. That is very, very good. So cool. Life Force. I didn't really think about that combo with Decidueye, but very cool to see on my opponent's part. Definitely a powerful stadium for grass-type Pokemon here. You see my opponent's got two Stage 2s in play now but they probably won't get the third one, I imagine. They only have one trade this turn, so they probably don't have it. Nope, they got Guzma, and I feel like they take out my Macargo if they can. 
Um, but I have Guzma in my hand, so I'm not really worried about them trying to stall anybody out. Uh, more or less just fine with, uh, yeah, the Macargo comes active. That's what I was thinking. So, and they're not even going to, all right, I'm cool with this. They're not going to do any of that. Uh, we, first of all, are going to counter this for sure. Uh, and then, let's see, we're doing 160, 170, 170 plus 40, that's perfect, that's a knockout there. So I think we just Guzma and let's attach another energy to like this Grand Bull just in case, I kind of like that. And then let's Rescue Stretcher, I think, yeah, totally cool with that. Uh, actually, I mean, I don't need the rescue stretcher yet, but anyways, let's let's Guzma up this thing. We're gonna we're gonna get that guy out here, and then um, I can lost blunder away these two things, and I can stack my deck to make sure that, or I kind of rescue stretcher first, then I draw. I actually kind of like that. I rescue stretcher first, shuffle three. Yep, let's throw these guys back into the deck just so that I have them. Then we instruct for one random card, and then I have the ability to instruct again if I'd like to, but I might not want to. I actually like this a lot. So I'm gonna smooth over and stack a Grand Bull on top of my deck so that that thing doesn't get um, sniped here. So we'll Lost Blender and then go get ourselves the Grand Bull, excellent, evolve there, and then all out for 160 damage. So great stuff there. Only have one prize remaining. I thought this matchup was going to be sketchy, but this is totally fine. Granbull is a house. Check this guy out. Just doing his thing here. Obviously, being able to control your top decks every single turn just makes this deck super, super valid. I mean, very, very consistent. We stack our deck literally every single turn. It's the same thing as like the other shrine decks, really. And the McCarthy Cargo Oranguru engine is just very real. The deck is very easy to set up because we only need one fairy energy in order to perform our attack. You know, Gramble is a stage one. Pretty easy to stream and just get into play. So 130 hit points also, super formidable amount of HP. The deck is very hard to, you know, very hard to, to overcome for sure. Definitely dig in the Gramble thing. 160 damage, just like a good amount of damage for a non-GX to pump out as well. Well, because you just uh, you can trade with all the other non-GX decks, even Alolan Executor, who we saw yesterday, uh, you know, gets knocked out by 160 damage all out. So this deck is definitely sweet. I mean, check out Granville. The artwork on this thing is amazing as well. Just super, super cool card there. Awesome stuff. Let's see. We need a Guzma to finish this game off. I think we can get it, uh, depending on what we top deck. But that's like what we're thinking. All we need to do is bring up one of these guys, and this game is over. So I think we got it. Yep, we're just nest ball, fair, fail the nest ball, stack Guzma, and that's game. So that is it. Yep, let's fail this real quick. Uh, done. Uh, that's not what we want. Let's see. Yeah, so then uh, let's just make sure the Guzma is in deck. Yep, we got a Guzma in deck, so cool. And then we stack Guzma, yep, draw into it. It's a thinker deck, honestly. There's like lots of thinking going on. You have to make sure that you do things correctly in the correct order. It's just everything's gotta be just right. And then we draw into it. You know, we can't bench or play the switch yet. We just draw into the Guzma. Then we go Guzma on this guy, and we bring up whoever because then we have to switch into Grand Bull, and then bench this, all out, 160 damage, busted deck, honestly. Super, super dope, cool stuff. Grand Bull getting in there with a win, first win of the day. Let's play another one, see what we get paired up against. Pretty cool Decidueye deck that my opponent had on their side of the field, but couldn't stand up to Clifford the Big Pink Dog, couldn't get in there. Unfortunately, uh, we did see some of our dudes almost get sniped out of play, but wasn't quite substantial enough to get there in the end. Eventually, you know, uh, at the end of the day, 130 hit points is just a lot, very sustainable. Unless they got like Tapu Coco in the active, I feel like that would probably be their best bet. Going in with Zorak is just really unfortunate. 
for a Decidueye deck, and I think that going forward, Decidueye Zorak, uh, Zorak might not even be the best partner for a Decidueye deck. I think it's probably Alolan Ninetales. You play the new Alolan Ninetales, the old Alolan Ninetales, you just got a lot of different options there. This is a pretty great start for us, honestly. We've got, you know, Slugma, Ditto Prism Star, we've got, uh, you know, Snubble in the active position. This is, like, exactly what we want. And we've got an Ultra Ball in hand. We've already got the Magcargo at the ready as well. Now this guy will be interesting to see how we end up doing against that, but we should be cool, honestly. Let's just throw that down there. Then we're gonna Ultra Ball for, and I guess we actually technically get rid of the Rescue Stretcher, which is super interesting, uh, or get rid of the Macargo and just keep the Rescue Stretcher, and that way we can you know pare our hand down as much as possible. But we're gonna get an Oranguru, and I'm not gonna play the Rescue Stretcher yet because we might just want that in order to get that Macargo back. Uh, but depending on like what our hand looks like, there we go. So that's interesting. I actually think I just, let's see, if I rescue stretcher it back now, that is interesting. We'll be fine because we just have the Macargo uh, in order to, you know, make sure that our hand is buffed out in the right kind of way next turn. And we also have this mysterious treasure, which does, you know, almost nothing, but that's okay. We do need to find a fairy energy for next turn. Uh, Ditto Prism Star can be a snubble, so that's cool too. And we're just going to pass it off to my opponent, see what they got going on on their side. Now, Flying Flip seems kind of tough for this deck to deal with, especially if they, oh, well, I guess we will never find out. On to the next one, 2-0, uh, we'll take it, okay. On to game three. Clifford to Big Pink Dog versus whatever the PTCGO ladder has to toss at us again. Hopefully it's a new deck. I'm really, really into seeing the creativity, seeing what people have to show as far as their ideas from Lost Thunder. I know I got like my ideas. I was trying to figure out what deck would like using Electro Power the most because I think Electro Power is just such a super cool card. And I was trying to think of like all the best lightning type Pokemon, but honestly, Tapu Koko is just the best lightning type Pokemon in format right now, the Snipe one. And Snipe is like pretty good right now. I think that Snipe kind of remains powerful. Looks like we might be playing against an Alolan Executor deck. I'm not sure though. I don't know, multi-type energy. Uh, I'm not sure, but let's see. We got ourselves a big hand here. Oh, Sableye, what in the world is this? Disable, choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks. Yikes, uh, once during a turn, you may look at the top card of your deck and you may discard that card. Interesting stuff there. We're gonna get Apricorn Maker. This is actually a pretty good card for us to start out with because we could go get Ultra Balls and stuff, which just help thin our hand down. So we'll get one Ultra Ball. We can get rid of Guzma and Diantha. And then uh, we can also get probably a second Ultra Ball. Yeah, we'll get two Ultra Balls. That actually seems pretty good. Then uh, that's unfortunate. Disable seems bad for us, but ugh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll do that. Then we'll Nest Ball. I definitely want to get in Rangaroo out. Then we also have Bodybuilding Dumbbells. That's cool. We've got Gramble. That's cool. I need to get a, let's see, Ultra Ball away, Guzma and Diantha. We're not going to be playing that early at all. Let's just go get the Ditto Prism Star. He could be whoever he wants to be. Love it. Okay, very cool. That almighty evolution. It's also good to get Ditto Prism Star early because he only has 40 hit points. So he can easily get knocked out by any amount of pressure your opponent decides to put on you. So it's nice to have him out on turn one so then he can just quick evolve into whoever turn two. We will also do this and then I think we just sit. There's no reason to really Ultra Ball again yet because then we just get Macargo and kind of go from there. So we'll do this and then just pass to my opponent and we'll play down our hand with that Ultra Ball next turn, get ourselves Macargo, make sure we stack some burnable card onto the top of our deck then we'll evolve Gramble, attach bodybuilding dumbbells, and go from there and get ourselves a turn two all out. Looks like my opponent does play Let Loose Marshadow though, so that's kind of interesting, and we'll see how that maybe impacts our game by them just shuffling up my top deck and also just disrupting my hand, giving me a four card hand, maybe on turns that I don't necessarily want it. Still just 
absolutely no idea what my opponent is doing though. I know that they are, are trying to get different types of energy in the discard pile. Looks like they are not playing an Alolan Executor deck. Uh, looks like, are they playing Shuckle? I know they want energy in the discard pile, but for what? <laughs> I just haven't quite figured that out. Uh, I'm not sure if they're playing Alolan Executor or if there's something else going on. That is interesting. I do love the energy drink attack, and I love that you know fresh squeezed kind of jives with energy drink. I think that that's just super cool, and that shuckle you know shuckles uh, I think potential has not nearly been tapped yet. I think that shuckle definitely has some potential as a playable card, not just for discarding energy, but also for accelerating it. So super cool there. Let's see, they excavated. Uh, now they're going to Lily for eight. So hopefully we get a little bit of an idea as to what in the world is going on on my opponent's side of the field after this Lily. They have a huge hand. Just bench something so that I can see. Oh, no, nope, they plan on using, they plan on accelerating. So this could be interesting because what they might be doing is just playing a toolbox deck where they discard tons of energy and then they just accelerate that energy with Shuckle and then attack. So like that could be what they're doing, which is interesting for sure. Uh, here we can Ultra Ball away our Gramble. That's actually just completely good. So we can Ultra Ball away Field Blower and Gramble, get ourselves McCargo, does that work? And then we could stack uh, another Gramble onto the top of our deck and draw into it. Does that work? Let's see. Yes, yes, that does work. All right, so let's Ultra Ball these away. Very cool. So that way we can get ourselves a second Gramble. I would like that. Get ourselves a McCargo into play. Always want to get the McCargo as early as possible for sure. And then we're not going to play any of the other two cards in our hand because we want to just draw one card off of the Instruct. So this way we're going to have two Grambles out. Then we can figure out how to get the Fairy Energy attached to them later. I already have a Fairy Energy on the active one. Cool stuff. All right, good. And then instruct for one, get the Gramble, evolve the Ditto Prism Star, Gucci. All right, great. And then we're going to knock out this Sableye, whatever it was planning on doing. I'm not exactly sure, but we got Rescue Stretcher, put a Pokemon from our discard pile into our hand, get the Gramble, and then bodybuilding dumbbells on the active. And we got 160 damage all out. Busted deck. Sweet. 160. Turn two, this deck is very consistent. Honestly, I uh, can't uh, say it enough. This deck just works. I didn't think it would work, but it does. Uh, it's just absolutely nuts. Now, you know, I, and the ability to do 160 damage just with a shrine deck means that you are putting other Pokemon just very close to knockout range. So like Pokemon GX, like, any sort of 180, 190 hit point Pokemon GX, you're putting them right there on the edge so that Shrine can kind of clean them up uh, very, very easily. So very stressful for GX decks and non-GX decks since we do hit that magic number 160, and 160 is just perfect for, like I said, knocking out Alolan Executors, which it does look like we are playing against some sort of Alolan Executor deck here. Ooh, we got ourselves a Grand Bull on top here, so that's not exactly who we want to see, but we can uh, just stack an Ultra Ball onto the top of our deck, uh, I guess. We actually only have one of these, though, and I don't want to Ultra Ball away my Fairy Energy, but I guess we kind of have to, uh, and I could just go get myself another Snubble, something like that. Um, that seems fine. So we have to get a card that, yeah, we have to get an Ultra Ball. That's just where we're at. So that's fine. We played four Ultra Ball for a reason. So let's just throw that on top. Don't like getting rid of the energy, but we got more. So that's okay. I guess I could attach the energy. Duh. Okay, yeah, so we'll do that. And then we'll instruct for two and then Ultra Ball. Yeah, yeah, whatever my other two cards away. Duh, Andrew, you're thinking too hard. All right, so that's fine. We'll just do that and then get ourselves Snubble, I guess. Or we get ourselves another Oranguru. It's kind of interesting. I think we just get ourselves a Snubble, though. That way, we're just streaming these guys back to back to back to back. And we all out for 160 damage again. Now, what's cool about that bodybuilding dumbbells is that that is actually going to keep me safe from getting knocked out 
by Alolan Executor. Uh, Alolan Executor tops out at 120 damage. If they play the Lorantis, tops out at 140 damage. So I have an effective 170 hit points right now, which is just absolutely fantastic for me. 170 hit point. Clifford, the big pink dog. He is a very big pink dog right now. There's no arguing against that. He's just out here. Look at him. Just look at him go. Look at those big teeth. A super cool Pokemon, honestly. Gramble. It's like pretty fun to see Gramble getting a little bit of spotlight there in the game in general. Looks like my opponent's playing a Mysterious Treasure Engine in their Alolan Executor deck. So they're using that to go get cards like Oracorio to help discard in that way. Uh, they are also, let's see, how did they do plus 20 damage this turn? That's that's what I want to know. Did they Kakui? They did Kakui. All right. So they have Kakui in their deck. And as we see, that Bodybuilding Dumbbell is really coming in clutch here. So we'll attach another energy and then just go stack our deck with another Ultra Ball. Now, we know we only have one Ultra Ball left in deck. So at this point, I feel like I want to get myself another... A Rangaroo, uh, because I feel like having another Rangaroo just kind of helps us smooth some things out. We'll smooth over. Cool. All right, so we're going to smooth over, stack that Ultra Ball. Uh, yeah, and we got to get rid of that Mug Cargo for sure. So stack that, Instruct, and we can see the synergy between Instruct and Ultra Ball is just so real in this deck and just helps the whole deck just work out absolutely perfectly so we'll get ourselves another Oranguru just in case we want to you know instruct twice i kind of like having that option and then we're just going to all out for another 160 damage absolutely perfect and at this point we are so far ahead in the trade that so long as we can continue um so long as we can continue kind of thinning our hand down to zero we should not lose this game at all now, I would like to find maybe a Diantha or something this next turn. I think that Diantha would really help. So this next turn coming up after they knock out my Gramble, it's Diantha time. Unless I discarded her. No, I discarded her. All right. I think I might want a second Diantha in here. Diantha is just super, super good and allows you to just get over an awkward turn. It's just like kind of a get out of jail free card. Uh, this upcoming turn might be awkward since I highly doubt that they will get rid of my shrine and i do have all four ultra balls in the discard pile so i'm kind of anticipating awkwardness here so we're going to try to figure that out we've got lost mixer to discard cards and we know we just need like a discard card to get rid of this shrine here or else it's uh it's not working out so diantha is who we want but we kind of had to, we had to get rid of the diantha early so now we just wish we had it so that's just like the boat that we're in all right, we got Fairy Energy. We got, I guess I lost Mixer. I just stack lost Mixer. Hope that I draw into a burnable card. And if not, then I get another chance to, you know, instruct and kind of hope for the best. So we're definitely getting a lost Mixer on top because that's just where we're at. And we don't bench anything. We'll get our Secret Rare lost Mixer. And then uh, let's see here. I think, I yeah, I want to attach this energy. That's a burnable card. And that way, actually, no, I just instruct. Hmm, okay. I just instruct, then I get rid of the two. Let's see, what are my energy situation like? The discard pile, I only have one. So I can just instruct once, get the Lost Mixer, get rid of these two cards. That's probably fine. Yeah, 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 that's cool. So we're going to do that. Let's just instruct. We don't need this fairy energy. We're going to get the Lost Mixer. Oh, my opponent's going to scoop. They don't want to watch me do it. I was going to do it. I was going to have it. It's going to be totally fine. We'll play one more. All right. All right, Clifford. Saddle up. We got one more game in us. Let's go. Let's go 4-0. I guess we got a couple scoops in there. But, you know, I was taking such command of those games. I don't really think that my opponent had any chance, honestly. So let's go in one more game with Clifford. Uh, this is honestly... You know, quickly becoming one of my favorite decks to play. It is a little awkward. It's fun. Uh, every hand kind of feels like this puzzle that you have to solve. And you want to solve the puzzle without making it so that you have to hope on your top deck. But sometimes you just get yourself in those hands where you just have to hope on your top deck. And like we saw there, I didn't have the Diantha. I didn't have the 
you know, Ultra Ball. So I was going to have to hope that I just lost Mixer into a burnable card. And that's fine, because even if I didn't lost Mixer into a burnable card, I had another Instruct, so I could have Instructed for two more. And then if I get a lost Mixer off of the Instruct, then we're at it again, and I uh, am going to burn again and hope that I just, you know, lost Mixer into a burnable card again. That kind of would just be where I was at. But I think we had pretty good odds of getting it, to be honest. Looks like my opponent is playing some sort of grass deck. I saw grass and colorless on the pre-game screen there. This hand is not looking super fuego. No, this is uh, is not great, but it's all good. I can lost Blender for one. That's pretty neat. Very cool. So we'll do that. And then I can also maybe Lost Blender some cards away and then Instruct, which is a thing we can do. I can Guzma, I guess. Uh, Guzma could be neat if I get something else going on. But it looks like I don't. So let's see what we got here. I definitely don't want the Diantha early. That's bad. I also don't really want this Rescue Stretcher early. So... That's probably where we're headed as far as burning cards to the Lost Zone goes. Let's get rid of Diantha. And again, I'm just getting rid of my Diantha early. It hurts. I don't like that, but that's kind of what we're doing. All right. So we're going to get rid of those. Draw one. Shrine. Okay, that's fine. It's a burnable card at least. And then we just have to attach in Guzma and instruct for one. How sad is that? Uh, sad. Very sad. All right. Instruct for one. See what we got cooking here. We got a switch. Alrighty then. Uh, <laughs> your turn, Mr. Nuko68. Show me what you got. And hopefully it's not anything substantial because I'm not trying to lose the game this early. They might be playing the Alolan Egg deck, to be honest. Uh, it looks like they have the Graw Vials. They have the Fomantis. That looks to be exactly what they have got going on over there. That is very cool. It was yesterday's video for me. So definitely like this deck as well. That Sunshine Grace does such an amazing ability. Just uh, gives the deck so much consistency. Now for me, I really want to see like anything else. Just a Pokemon that I could switch into would be great. Uh, they are definitely playing the Alolan Eggman deck. Not definitely. I guess they could be playing a dedicated Sceptile deck. We haven't actually seen the... Um, we have not seen the uh, Alolan Exeggutor yet. So I'm guessing by searching for the Trico, they are playing a dedicated Sceptile deck. Uh, but here goes Shuckle, so never mind then. I guess they are going to di discard Colorful Energy, I'm imagining. And that kind of points to the fact that they are playing Alolan Exeggutor. So this is definitely Alolan Exeggutor. There is Execute. And my opponent's deck is just setting up beautifully while I sit here with my uh, Ranguru. Yes, this is actually exactly who I wanted. Very good. So we can do this, and then we can switch, and we just hope that my opponent does not knock me out this turn. Please don't knock me out. We're going to instruct. And then we want a, oof, Great Ball will be fine. Uh, let's see who we get off a of Great Ball. Excellent. I think that I get just another Snubble just in case the thing gets knocked out. So that's good. And then we just Guzma again. And this is horrible. All right. Uh, we're going to Guzma up uh, Trico, I guess. No, we actually... Ew, this is just ugly either way. Uh, we'll bring up the Shuckle. Shuckle actually can do something. I think I'd rather bring up the Trico. That's that's fine. We're going to bring up Trico. And we're going to bring our other Snubble into the active position. And you got it, friend. It's your turn. <laughs> this is the bad side of Grand Bull. Now you guys are seeing... The consequences of playing a deck that plays like no draw supporters, just zero. There are zero draw supporters in here. This is all just Apricorn Makers and Guzmas and one Diantha. That's all we got going on here. So this is definitely just something that happens. Um, you know, sometimes you're just going to draw into cards awkwardly. You're going to get off to a tough start. And you're not going to be able to get the Macargo engine out. And then you're just going to kind of flail around hoping your opponent doesn't bench you before you lose the game. But obviously, once you get the engine up, it is so glorious. When Cargo and Oranguru are so good comboed together, especially when your entire deck is made up of cards that just thin your deck down. That is very, very cool. So let's see what my opponent's got going on on their side. They got a Grass Energy, and they can find a friend, which is actually super cool. So maybe I should have brought up the Shuckle instead. I just know that the Trico evolves into, like, 
Oh, what are they going to do? They're going to Synthesis, search your deck for a Grass Energy card and attach it to one of your Pokemon. So they'll Synthesis, and then they'll retreat into a Lolan Executor next turn. So we got one turn to figure this out. Let's uh, let's figure it out. All right, let's go. Rescue Stretcher, horrible card to top deck. Let's get in there. Instruct for one card. It's an Apricorn Maker. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so we want to get, like... I guess another net ball, another not net ball, another nest ball, and then we also want like probably an ultra ball. So that would be good. Yes, we gotta admit we're like just not doing damage this turn. That's probably not what's happening. So we will, yeah, we'll do that, and we'll get ourselves like another Oranguru. Honestly, seems kind of good. Uh, we got ourselves another Oranguru, and then I kind of want to draw more cards. I guess that's actually kind of bad. I hmm, I get Oranguru, and then I can Ultra Ball them both away, and then I can instruct for more cards. I actually kind of like that. Yeah, let's... Oh, no, I forgot that goes straight to my bench. So that's fine. Uh, then let's just Ultra Ball. Let's just Ultra Ball that whole hand away. That's fine. Ditch it. Get it out of here. We need a Slugma. Do I have a Ditto Prism Star? No, I don't have a Ditto Prism Star. Let's get Ditto Prism Star. He could be anything. All right, so we'll do that. And then we're just going to instruct for three more cards. And that's fine. Yep, so let's just do that. We're just burning eight and out here. Cool. All right, we got to switch to another Apricorn Maker. That's fine. That's going to help us kind of set up a sustainable board anyway. So we'll get ourselves an actual Slugma here. And that way I can just next turn hopefully attack. That's that's what we're hoping for. And switch, I mean switch could get the snubble out of danger there, which could be kind of good. They're doing let's see, two, four, six, eight, doing a hundred damage. So I think we want honestly the snubble kind of has to stay in the active position, huh? Think that's just the way it is. If I switch now, that could just be bad. I guess I could switch into Ditto. Huh, but that doesn't really help my case at all. Uh, I think the ditto, yep, we might as well just leave it here. The switch is a burnable card, it's cool. Might want it, you know, next turn or so coming up. So we will be able to attack next turn. We're gonna evolve into this Grand Bull here with the Fairy Energy. We're gonna be Gucci on that front. We've got a couple of cards that can evolve into Mark Cargo, but it took us a long time to get here. Fortunately, my opponent's deck has been, you know, not the fastest either way. I mean, uh, these decks don't always get the turn to attack, especially if you don't start with your, you know, Snubble here, or if you don't start with, uh, as my opponents didn't start with Execute, they started Trico, or they started, who they start? I don't know, they started somebody else. They started somebody, I think it was probably a Trico. But, yeah, so that's what we got going on. Or it was Ditto Prism Star. That's why I can't remember. They started Ditto Prism Star. So I guess they could have gotten the early egg, but then they decided to evolve into Grovile. And Grovile does admittedly have an awkward amount of retreat cost. Retreat cost of two is just super weird. So when you do get Grovile in the active position, it's never exactly what you want. It's just uh, kind of weird. So let's see, they are gonna be going in here. They've got the, why'd you do that? Oh, do they have an energy in their hand they wanna retreat? Uh, I feel like they should have retreated before they evolved. Lawrence has got another awkward retreat cost of two. So they might have stuck themselves there, which would be, oh no, they have Guzma, oh, never fear. So they're gonna take out my man with the energy here. That is bad, that's not what we wanted. Sad day, okay, so. We now are tasked with finding, yes, okay, that's that's fine. We will put him into the active position. Ditto Prism Star can be whoever he wants to be. So we've got the fairy energy, great. Then we have to, I guess, Apricorn Maker. And I think I can get Great Ball and Ultra Ball, I think. So yeah, let's do that. I think I can get Great Ball and Ultra Ball. That seems fine. And we're gonna do that, because I have two Orangaroos. So I can kind of like instruct and then, yeah. So we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna switch into Snubble, that's fine. And then we're gonna Great Ball and see who we get. Um, we got a Snubble, that's okay. And then I'm gonna instruct once, and yeah, that's cool. Because I, have I instructed yet? No, I haven't instructed at all. So we'll bench that and we'll instruct once. 
So I have to get a Grand Bull here for sure. We can Ultra Ball for Grand Bull. That's fine. But unfortunately, we don't have... Uh, let's see. What are my Ultra Ball situation like? Oh, I'm going to be out of Ultra Balls real quick here. I can Ultra Ball for Macargo. That actually seems like probably the better play. I can Ultra Ball for Macargo, and then I can stack my last Ultra Ball on top of my deck and go get the Grand Bull. Now, that's a little bit sketchy because we know, as we saw from last game, the Ultra Balls are kind of a... Uh, kind of a tight resource, right? Like the Ultra Balls are super valuable. So I have to smooth over and put the Ultra Ball on top of my deck that we have to get the Macargo out or else this deck is just not going to work. So we have to do that. Now we're going to instruct into it and that's fine. Yeah, we're getting our Gramble out guaranteed. No, not at this cost. Oh, too fair energy. That's rough. Okay. And like I said, I just got the energy reset. Oh, bad. I think we just lose now because we've burned too many energy. We just can't win. And I'm not playing the energy recycle system. I cut it. So now we're seeing how valuable the energy recycler really is. We kind of just have to play it. Uh, might have an energy. We'll see. We got one, two, two in deck, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's just it. I just have two more energy. So I guess we got to hope that my opponent doesn't knock out all of my Grambles, but they're going to be fine doing that. They just have the Grovile. They can Sunshine Grace every turn. They're going to be able to stream eggs at this point, and I'm just stuck, just ultimately stuck, wishing that I still played that energy recycle system. So common theme in the last few days, the energy can be tight with these decks. All right, so I guess don't cut your energy recycle system. Keep that card in there just as like a backup because you do have to just do so much discarding so much burning in this deck that sometimes you're going to end up just unfortunately discarding too many energy and we saw there that oh that was just unfortunate i mean you you just hope not to draw into too energy there that's like really bad but i think that that's probably just game we can't really make that happen and i had to discard my diantha again of course did i or is that the other game no, we got Diantha. All right, we didn't lose yet. I got Diantha. We can make it happen. So then the, with the Diantha, that means that I have four energy left in deck uh, because I could Diantha for two energy. But uh, I don't want to have to Diantha for two energy because if I Diantha for two energy, then that means that I won't be able to play one. So that's all bad. That really just means that I have three more attacks left. They would have to just utterly whiff an attack or not be able to knock out one of my Grambles, which is possible. We do play bodybuilding dumbbells, so I can potentially make it work. Uh, I just don't want to. Now, next turn, I do have Guzma in hand, so, ugh, but we have to also get ourselves a Gramble. I feel like the strategy is just falling apart. I need too much, and my opponent has just got ahead of the game too fast here. In order for me to be able to keep up, oh, this is this is sad. So we need to Guzman that Lorantis for sure. The Lorantis is how they're doing 140 damage. That's just that's just what's going on. So we definitely want to Guzman. I'll promote the Ditto's Prism Star just in case we don't decide to Guzma for whatever reason. Now I know I don't have Ultra Ball. I know I don't have Fairy Energies. I don't have many of them. Um, we have Diantha. We could Diantha for an Ultra Ball. I could stack Diantha for an Ultra Ball and an Energy, I guess. Probably seems fine. And then, oh, I have this is actually my last Guzma. How fun is that? That I'm never Guzming for the rest of the game, right? Oh, that's horrible. Okay. So we either just go for it on Guzma and hope we just draw into like. You know, that's horrible. We definitely don't do that. We have to Diantha here. Let's just, sure, let's just smooth over. And we're going to stack that Diantha. If it's in here, it's not in here. Alrighty then. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, so we have Guzma. The Diantha is not available. So we need Fairy Energy and we need a Grand Bull. I think the Fairy Energy is kind of like the tough resource to find. So we're going to stack the Fairy Energy on top. And we're just going to hope that we get some playable cards. Uh, what other way is there to do it? So let's just uh, let's let's get after it. Sure, we're going to just do everything that we're going to do, and we're going to draw three because we also need 
to draw into a Gramble. So I need to see lots of cards and I need them to all be burnable. So this is like horrible. This is the last thing you want. Oh, and that just like, yeah, that confirms it. No, I got the energy. Ooh, yeah, so we need like a Lost Mixer or something like that. So let's, uh, we got this. We need to draw into Lost Mixer to discard the rest of this hand away. Yikes, I think, yeah, we just give it two cards and we hope that we get the Lost Mixer. Shuffle, let's put a Pokemon from my discard pile into my hand. We'll get this one. Gramble, we got it, all right. And then we just, yup, we need a Lost Mixer. And then we need the Lost Mixer into a burnable card. That's just what we need to do. Oh, we got Great Ball and Choice Band, so that's just unfortunate. We got one card in this deck, in this hand, that we cannot cannot get rid of. So that's just gonna be all sad there. We'll evolve that, sure. Yep, we just don't have it. Unfortunate, all out for 30 damage. So long as my opponent can retreat this Lorantis, that was my last Guzma. If they can re retreat this Lorantis, there's no way. We needed every single energy in our deck to be a knockout. We could not afford this whatsoever. So they do have tons of search. They got two Sunshine Graces. Uh, if they knock out this Gramble, we're out. That's it, we lose for sure. So that's just a tough way to end it, but we did win like a bunch of games. You guys saw how good Grambo can be. Potentially just need a few more tweaks to the list. I think the Energy Recycler, I think Riley was talking about, you know, potentially not needing it. Um, and I was, I was in agreement uh, with that as well because I hadn't really used it meaningfully yet either. So I was like, yeah, let's ditch it. You don't need it. You get Diantha for your energy back. But, ooh, and then you get games like this, which, to be honest, we probably weren't winning this game anyway. Let's see, they're going to knock out the Macargo, so I'm actually going to stick this game out and see what we end up doing here because uh, that's, like, pretty good for us. But I don't think they've got literally knockout here, and then, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We need them to, like, not get some things, so that's fine. We got Apricorn Maker, that's a burnable card, fantastic. We could just get our one Nest Ball here, and sure, uh, let's just play that. Uh, we don't have any Pokemon to search for, fine, fine, no problems here, only 10 cards left in deck, totally fine. We get to all out for knockout, let's do that. 160 damage, and you can see how slow and grindy these Shrine matchups are as well. They're just such grind fests, honestly. Just uh, ugh, taking one prize turns every single turn, and your deck takes three turns just to get up and rolling, and then you're just like, you know, are you gonna be the first person to whiff, or am I gonna be the first person to whiff? My opponent just got off to such a good start, though, that I think like there's no chance that they don't just have Rescue Stretcher, right? So then, so long as they don't run out of energy, which they shouldn't run out of energy, they do have three grass there, four, five. So they probably play seven uh, grass energy, which is like a healthy amount of grass energy, but they might not have it in their hand. So I will wait to see if potentially they don't have uh, that grass energy in hand. We really needed, just in a bad way, needed to knock that Lorantis out. Uh, if we knock out that Lorantis there, then their whole strategy falls apart. They're only dealing 120 damage to my Grambles, and then I start trading favorably, and I'm able to kind of come back a little bit, but so long as they're just maintaining these one-hit knockouts, I really don't see it going anywhere pretty. And it's crazy, because you know, my opponent's got three prizes left. I've got four, but the writing's already on the wall. We already know where this is going, unfortunately. So, yeah, we just got one fairy energy left in the deck. Four, five, six, and I think that only plays seven energy. So I think we just got that one left. No Diantha in sight, so that's it. My opponent's going to Lily. You know, they got a decent chunk of their deck in their hands as well. So they should be cool. I can't strand anything because I don't have Guzmas left. I had to discard all my Guzmas just to get going, so... Yikes, they knock out my grand ball. Let's see, if we don't get an attack here, it's game over, I'm, I'm just scooping it up. So let's see, it is possible that my opponent, you know, just doesn't have the energy. So we'll, we'll see if we can find it. Yikes, all right, so I think that here we just lost Blender and uh, that's not a fairy energy. That's actually not even a burnable card. So let's instruct a little bit more. We actually don't even have, this is just all bad. Yep, we don't have the energy. I had an attack, I had the, the bodybuilding dumbbells, I have everything, but 
we don't have the energy. All bad. So that's it. You got it. Well played. We're out of here. We ain't got nothing. We just got the one, uh, the one energy left to deck. Five cards left to deck. Look, it's sad. Sad, sad, sad. Got off to too slow of a start there. So good game to my opponent. Hopefully you guys liked Grand Bull. Uh, let me know what you guys think of Grand Bull in the comments below. Is this a deck you guys are into? You think it's like real? You think it has potential? Or is it just a goofy gimmick and like kind of not worth investing too much time into? Let me know your thoughts. Again, I just cut the energy recycle for another switch. Don't do that. Just just put the energy recycle back into the deck for sure. We're just slapping that right back in there. Don't even do that. I just was thinking to myself, Diantha. huh? Multiple Diantha? All right, maybe put another Diantha in here, but you know, the energy thing, the recycle system, probably want that in there. That card seems fine. Honestly, just getting three energy back into the deck is like really good when you have just those awkward beginnings like I had that game. So I don't mind that. Natalie likes another Diantha in here. I don't mind another Diantha as well, but other than that, uh, deck is pretty dope. So. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub the channel, ring that bell. Let me know what you guys think of this deck in the comments below. Make sure to check out the Etsy store and Patreon stuff in the description below as well. Peace.